Right. Good evening and welcome to the press conference with England manager Gareth Southgate and player Jordan Pickford. Simultaneous translation is available in English, German, French and Italian through the Interpify app. So please keep your question to one of those four languages. Please raise your hand if you wish to ask a question and a microphone will be brought to you. Please state your name, your media organization and who the question is for. And uh, remember, it is just one question per person. I will now hand the floor to uh, England Press Officer Andy. Thanks. Uh, we'll start here with Carvey Solico, please. Sure, and I. Hi, it's Carvey Solico from Sky Sports. Um, just a question for each of you, first of all, for Gareth. Uh, Jude Bellingham has been cleared to play tomorrow. As expected, um, he's just got a fine, but he also got a suspended ban. Um, what did you make of UEFA's decision? And also, will you be speaking to Jude to make sure that he stays on his best behaviour? Because obviously he could get a, a ban if there's any repeats of what happened. And also just for Jordan, uh, you're obviously one of the most vocal members of the England squad. Um, what did you make of what Jude did? And do you feel that you will need to speak to him as well before the game against Switzerland? Do you want me to give you some time to think about that? <laughs> <laughs> I don't need um, for that. Um, I thought it was a common sense decision. Um, clearly, when you score a goal of the quality that he did, um, at the moment that he did, at the age that he is, you're, you're going to um, have an incredible rush of adrenaline. And um, I think there was no intent in the... Uh, in the gesture towards anybody other than um, uh, sort of communication he has with his family. So um, from our perspective, um, we, we thought it was a, a sensible outcome, really. Are you speaking to him as well? I speak to players all the time, so um, I, I don't feel a particular need to uh, spend additional time with Jude on that. I think he... He is aware of the investigation and um, he's an intelligent guy. I don't think I need to tell him anything really, do I? Let's be honest. Uh, just let, let him play his football and enjoy it. Henry Winter next. Hi, Henry Winter, World Soccer. Jordan, one for you, if I may. When Jude actually said he's who else? That was obviously him, you know, celebration of his ability to change the game. But is tomorrow one of those games where, I mean, you know, we've seen your commitment, but is it one of those games where everyone has to step forward? Yeah, um, we're a team of 26 and everyone's got to be raring to go for the game tomorrow and whoever's ready to play, be be ready. And um, we've prepared well all week and, yeah, anyone who's ready to play is to step up and do the job for the badge and... We're all passionate people as well, so um, yeah, we're, we're ready for, for tomorrow. Rob Thompson, Rob Harris. Hi, Rob Harris from Sky News. Uh, Gareth, uh, congratulations on your 100th game tomorrow. Um, how do you reflect now on your 100 matches, obviously knowing that you're sort of heading towards uh, the end of this tournament as well, hoping you're going all the way? Um, well, I'm very proud, but... Um it's the least important statistic of the week. Um, the only thing that matters is that it's a quarter final, and uh, my complete focus is on trying to get my country into another semi final. So um, I'm sure in years to come I'll look back on that with um, and reflect with great pride. But at the moment, it's the, yeah, it is the last thing on my mind really. Thanks for here. Hi, Garrett on your left. Uh, Jeremy Talbot from uh, AFP. Um, Phil Foden has a fantastic season with Man City, but um, he didn't reach the same level of performance uh, during the Euros. Um, will you try something different tomorrow to get the best out of him? Thank you. Uh, Phil has done a fantastic job for the team. Um, he's had to adapt his game a little bit. Obviously, when you're 
playing at a club um, every week, you know the movements of every player and you know the uh, the links, um, very clear way of playing. Um, so if you're doing things without thinking so often and with the national team, that's not possible. You don't have the same cohesion. So there is a, there is a change in the dynamic, but we're very happy with what he's done with us. Um, he was unfortunate with the disallowed goal. He's unfortunate with the goal that, um, that he nearly created in the uh, match before that. And, um, also, the amount of work he does for the team um, with with his pressing and uh, the intelligence of that was was very very important for us in all of the matches that we've had. So, yeah, we we uh, I know he would like a goal. We we're we're not uh, um, we're not we're not concerned by his performances, but, but you know we'd also love a goal that is allowed as well. So um, let's see if he can deliver that tomorrow, James. Yeah. Hi there, uh, James Olley from ESPN. Good luck to you both tomorrow. Um, there's been a lot of focus on England needing to play better, maybe entertain a bit more, but is is that really a requirement in tournament football? I mean, knockout football, ultimately the result is the only thing that matters rather than playing well. Well, you obviously want to play well as a as a team. Your ambition is to play as well as you possibly can. Every team wants to excite. Every team wants to score goals. Um, we've played opponents who um, have made it very, very difficult for us. Um, and as we've seen in some of the results they've had in subsequent games, they've they've given other teams problems as well. Um, and yeah, there's been a lot of expectation on on the team in the early part of the tournament, especially. So I feel that the team, even in training now, look in a different place mentally. They look. Uh, more fluid, and um, I'm expecting us to play well tomorrow. Your second row here. Mr. Southgate, Sebastian Rita, 20 minutes Switzerland. Um, after the Italian match, I had a clash with Spalletti because I compared Switzerland and Italian with two cars, um, Fiat Panda and Ferrari. Now the question to you, um, if we look at the market value and uh, yeah, the performance so far, what would you say is England uh, big heavy, maybe slow Rolls-Royce and Switzerland uh, fast Mini Cooper? Well, Switzerland have been excellent. Um, there's no doubt that they have a great spirit. They have some very good players. Um, they have a clear way of playing that has caused a lot of problems for other teams. Um, of course, um, the valuation on English players is always high. Um, because our league is the only one that can afford to, to pay that sort of money. So there's a different valuation and football matches aren't played on balance sheets or by data. They're played on graphs by human beings and it's about what you do on the day. So, um, we, we know, uh, what we're capable of. We know that in the last couple of games, there's been signs that that's coming. To go behind in the game against Slovakia was a really enormous test. You know, in tournaments, there's a different um, emphasis when you're behind. There was an anxiety coming from the stadium, and you've got to be really uh, brave to use the ball, as our players did, right the way till the end of the game. So I was full of admiration for the way they kept their nerve, the way they kept playing, trying to create good opportunities. Um in years gone by, we might have gone really direct in those moments, lost our composure. So they stayed with the game. And um, in the end, I think we deserved a draw in the 90 minutes. We had 70% of the ball. Uh, we'd like to have created more clear chances. Um, and then to get the goal early in extra time, I thought we saw the game through really well. Um, so, yeah, we know we have to be better. Um your Mini Cooper has been excellent. Um, we, we've got to find another level. Any question there? Hi, Gareth. Joe Rawson, Sky News. Um, is it possible that you will change the system tomorrow? And if you do, what are the, the merits from playing a different formation, five at the back, for instance? Well, we're always considering the best way to approach a game. Um, and... 
in modern football, you build and you defend in different ways quite often. Um, Switzerland themselves, at, you know, they, they spend time building the game in a back four at times. They very fluid in their formation. Um, so it's a good example of the way the modern game is played and you write a formation on a piece of paper, but the team are rarely in that shape at any given moment if you, if you pause the, uh, pause the action. So, um, we, we're always preparing the team for, um, trying to give the opponent the, the most problems we can, but also respecting their strengths. And, uh, obviously the Swiss have a lot of strengths at the moment. Okay, Joe at the back. Hi, Gareth. Joe Wardrop here from i News. Um, at the risk of spoiling the politics-free zone in camp, you've outlasted four British Prime Ministers and you are onto your fifth. At least he is a football fan. Um, do you have any advice for Zakir Starmer and do you ever wonder who has the harder job? Um, well, I'm not envious of his job. Um, no, I don't have any advice. Um, I think when you're in a position of um, responsibility, um, as I am, you realize that advice comes from every direction. Everybody has a simple to solution to complex problems. So I'm sure he's going to be inundated with that sort of, uh, feel. And yeah, having been in the role I have, the one thing I would do is not be offering any, uh, additional issues for him by speaking publicly about anything. So, uh, um, wish him well. We want, uh, strong country um yeah we, we all want the best possible conditions in in the uk and uh whoever is in charge whichever government is in charge um you know that's that's what we all that's what we all desire hi gareth uh, kieran from canning from afp you, you mentioned after the slackia game really stressed the importance of the impact that the subs have made throughout the whole tournament but i think it's 10 of the 11 have started every single game. Is that especially what happened against Slovakia, giving you food for thought in terms of making more changes tomorrow to freshen it up? Well, physically, the team are in good condition. Um, we obviously lose Mark suspended. Um, so, again, there's that balance of continuity, um, but players who are coming into the game having a good impact, you want your substitutions to make a difference. And I think in every game, our our substitutions have. That's great credit to the players, their mentality, the way all of them are training. They're, they're all ready to come into the game. And when you win a game with, you know, the two goal scorers off the pitch, but with a lot of the rest of the squad on the pitch, it's massive for building the bond and the feeling that everybody has of contributing to the cause. So, um, you, we've definitely felt that in the, in the, uh, in the camp this week. Ibrahim from B in Sports. Jordan, Mark Gehe played, played every minute from the beginning of the tournament in front of you. Any impacts of missing him in this game? And did you, what do you make of it? No, I think he's been brilliant since he's come in, but, um, it's an opportunity for somebody else to come in and take the role. And, um, like I said earlier, uh, everyone's here on merit because I've had a great season with the club and um, so whoever's ready to play and play tomorrow they're going to be ready and to take the challenge on um, Frida Fagerlund, After Nord, Sweden a uh, question for Jordan um, obviously you and yeah, you and your teammates, you don't have that much time together, you play under different types of managers with different philosophies and style of plays would you say it's been more challenging to sort of find your identity on the pitch this time around in this tournament? And if yes, why would you say that is? No, I don't think so. Me as a goalkeeper, um, you've got to keep your own identity um, in the shape of the manager and the staff and the way the one we want to play. I've got to adapt to that and, um, and so is the rest of the team. So yeah, so whatever's given to me, I'm ready to take the challenge on and um, I can learn every day. I want to get better every day as a goalkeeper and whatever gets put in front of me, I'll keep working harder to get better. Yeah, question. Hi, Gareth. Etienne Wiemer from Switzerland, Teha Media. Question for you. How is it for you personal that people in England and journalists are talking about who could be the future manager 
of the England squad. How do you handle this situation? It, it's a fact of life, you know. Um, if you're in a um, one of the most uh, high-profile jobs in world football, then there's always going to be speculation. There's always going to be assessment of what's going on. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I'm not. I'm not worried. When I was a young manager. Um, you're trying to forge a career and you're worried that if the first job doesn't go well, you'll never get another job. Um, so you worry about failing and you worry about getting the sack and you worry about all those things. When you're older, I'm 53, um, I'm not worried about losing. I'm not worried about what might go wrong. We have an opportunity tomorrow to get to another semi-final. It's a positive challenge and that's how I view it. So, um, yeah, the downside for me is irrelevant. It's about going for it now. Um, that's, that's been my mindset for quite a while. And certainly it's been my mindset through this tournament because, um, you, you know, that, um, there's always going to be reaction to how we play as well as the result. It's, it's, it's the nature of, um, of the role that I have. Okay. Tom Barkley and then two at the front. Tom Buckley from The Sun. Just a question for Jordan. Um, you've played in lots of different systems over the years with England. I just wondered what's the difference, you know, from a technical point of view as a goalkeeper between playing three at the back and a back four? Um, I don't think there's much difference, to be honest, like the manager said earlier. Um, no one's in that, that exact position at the right time. It's just about us being balanced no matter what formation you play, um, being in the right positions but as a goalkeeper it's a bit different I don't have to worry as much but uh, yeah if it's back three or back four then the shape's going to be roughly the same anyway Jack Pippa Hi Gareth, Jack Pippa from The Athletic you said that you saw an improvement in training this week, would that have been just a, a boost from the Slovakia game or something technical or tactical or, or, what, or something else I just think um, the longer the players are here the more belief they have um, the less they're being affected by what's outside. Um, they can see the opportunity. They can see on the one hand, you know, we talked about being here or being in camp for 45 days when we met. Now that has to be just 10. So that feels much closer. But in, at the same time, I said to them this morning, it's still a million miles away because Every game can take you into uh, um, on a journey like the game did the other night. So you you've, you've, you can't for one minute be thinking of what what's next. It's all about tomorrow. We have to deliver tomorrow. We have to be ready to go until the very last minute again. Um, dig deep in the moments that you have to to win these big matches. Um, but you know they're highly motivated guys, and they can see the possibility of a semi-final. So if understandably there's a buzz about them and um, they're excited to take that challenge on. Mark. Hi, Jordan. Mark and Brian's through PA. Um, you've got seven clean sheets in Euros games now. That's only, I think it's only Casillas, Van der Sar and Buffon have only got more than that. What? How does it feel to be in that kind of company? And, and what is it about tournament football you think brings the best out of you as a goalkeeper? Um, I like the pressure. You know, I like the pressure of the big games, the big game moments. Um, but also, I, I, I've got them clean sheets, but it's not just me. It's a full 11. All the lads come off the bench and I'll never take the full applaud. It's, I'm there to do my job, but the rest of the side's there to do the defensive job as well. So, yeah, it's a team effort. And if I can help the team and keep a clean sheet with the ability we've got going forward, it's always going to give us a chance. Get Dan Rowan. Thank you. Uh, Dan Rowan, BBC News. Gareth, you're, you're just two wins away now from the first final that England have ever played in a major tournament overseas. The last time you played a quarter final in the World Cup, you had France to contend with. This time, the draws, most people would agree, has been a bit kinder to England. After Switzerland, uh, as we know, uh, Netherlands or Turkey away in the semi final. I know you want to get, don't want to get too far ahead, but if you sort of said to the players, look, these opportunities may not come round for you again. This is a, this is a sort of chance that you have to seize. I would say that's a classic example of the sort of entitlement we have as a nation that creates drama and annoys our opponents. 
Um, we're playing a really strong football nation who uh, have played exceptionally well, well prepared, have enormous pride. Um, our focus is on how do we win this game and how do we play to the best of our ability. Um, as you rightly said, we've never been to a final outside England. We've only had two finals in our history, uh, three semi-finals. So lots of nations who um, we might perceive as English people to be smaller have had far better records than us in terms of winning things, in terms of getting to the latter stages of finals. It's half the problem we have. Um, but, you know, we're ready for tomorrow. And um, as a team, we definitely have huge respect for our opponents. And um, we know we've got to be at our very best to be able to win the game. Okay, Eric here. Good evening, everybody. Question for Jordan. Would you like to have a penalty shootout tomorrow, uh, maybe to win the award or rather not? No, whatever it takes for us to win the game, you know. If it's 90 minutes, that'll be ideal. But um, like the manager said, we're against a very tough opponent and um, we'll do anything to get the result. Uh, if that means going to a penalty shootout, maybe it. But we're prepared for anything for tomorrow. Can you see no further hands raised, so... Just one back to Carve to finish then. Uh, Gareth, I just want to ask you, uh, left back position has obviously been a bit of a concern during this tournament. Um, Luke Shaw's back in full training. Is he fit to start the game tomorrow and how much of a risk would it be for him to start the game considering he hasn't played since February? Uh, and if he doesn't play, what are your other options tomorrow? Well, Kieran Trippi has been absolutely outstanding for us. So um, Luke is available. He's available to start. Um, but Kieran has also done a, a brilliant job for the team. Um, he obviously doesn't give us that balance that a natural left footer um, can give you. But his, um, his leadership, his communication on the pitch, if you ask any of the wingers that play with him uh, or the players that play alongside him his his talking is phenomenal and uh, you know it helps them to play the game he, he uh, it's a much undervalued quality and it's a bit of a dying art really you know good good talkers on the pitch um, you can't have enough of them and um, yeah he, he has exceptional qualities in that area as well as some quality on the ball um, so yeah he's adapted and done a brilliant brilliant job for us ok we'll conclude it there and look forward to seeing you tomorrow thank you thank you cheers keepers